Okay, so today we start Unit 9 on Advanced Topics in Agent-Based Modeling. Now, unlike some of the other units, this uh, unit is going to kind of jump around a little bit. It's going to go on a bunch of different topics and talk about a bunch of different concepts. And in many cases, we're not going to go through enough that you'll actually be able to build a model directly from the, what we're going to talk about here. But the goal is to inspire you to think about how you might want to build models and to do some research on your own to figure out how you might use some of the techniques I'm going to talk about to build your own models. Uh, and hopefully it also highlights some new features in NetLogo and things like that that maybe you hadn't known about that you might want to use in your own models in different ways, right? So to begin with, I'm going to talk about a spot that's uh, near and dear to my heart, which is incorporating uh, machine learning in different ways into agent-based modeling, right? And if you think about it, if you think back to what we've thought about already, we've talked about two other ways to incorporate agent machine learning. And in unit three, we talked about using machine learning to help agents make decisions vis-a-vis -vis, uh, the L for all bar problem, right? Um, and then in unit uh, five, we talked about using, oh sorry, unit um, seven, we talked about using agent-based model, or sorry, machine learning to optimize an agent-based model using uh, behavior search, right? To kind of calibrate an agent-based model, if you will, right? Um, here we're going to talk about something a little bit different. It's kind of related to both of those, but different, right? It's kind of related to calibration and to uh, parameterization and having agents think differently. And uh, so let me just get to it. So the, the you know this is a set of work that I've been doing for the last four or five years with um, David Darman, uh, who's at the Uniform Services University now, Jinpei Harada, who's at Amazon Japan, uh, and Jared Sylvester, who um, is at Booz Allen Hamilton now. All three of them were at one time students working with me um, on a variety of projects and with Michelle Gervan, who is a uh, physics professor and an expert on networks at uh, the University of Maryland and also an external faculty member for the Santa Fe Institute. Um, and we were, we were kind of uh, impressed by the new big data that was coming out, right? Um, you see all this data about Twitter, about um, apps, about all these things, and we have all these new impressions that people are leaving on the digital sand. People have called this digital exhaust at times, right? It's things that people, that this data that's just floating out there. And we were interested in trying to know, could it tell us something new and interesting about human behavior, right? Since it represents some sort of impression left by a human by an action that decided to take, right? But the challenge with all that big data is that there's a lot of it, right? And so we don't know how to actually work with it. And aggregation of the data, if you just take a look at means and variances, you're automatically throwing away a huge chunk of what's important and interesting about the data, which is the heterogeneity of the data, right? The fact that there are individual level differences. But you can't sit around, or most people can't sit around and look at 10 million tweets every day. So you can't really get into the richness by, by individually examining each element. So you have to figure out a compromise. How do we not aggregate across all the meaningful differences, but at the same time represent the individual level behavior without causing us to spend so much effort that we can't literally do it in a single day, right? Um, and one of the solutions is agent-based modeling, right? Because agent-based modeling to represent individual behavior, but do it in a computational format that doesn't require you to kind of hand code necessarily every single individual behavior. However, traditionally, agent-based models are derived from theory, right? Um, now, we've pointed out some exceptions to this as we've gone through this course, but the vast majority of them have been derived from theory, not from data. So can we create agent-based models directly from big data, right, that would model the individual behavior that we're seeing without having to hand code each and every model, right? And we came up with a solution. Our solution was let's use machine learning to derive individual level rules for the agents automatically, then use the resulting ABM to understand the overall emergent properties of the behavior, right? And the particular framework we decided to use was one that comes out of the Santa Fe Institute, and it's this work that's been done by Jim Crutchfield, uh, Cosmos Shalizi, and a number of others while they were there, and have gone on to do since then as well, on uh, creating Epsilon machines. So, um, Epsilon machines are this idea that you have these um, machines, these state machines, are sometimes called causal state models, right, that you can build for each and every individual in which you group together 
statist statistically similar paths that give the same future, right? So, and sorry, let me take a step back on that. You group together paths that give the statistically similar future. I put the words in the wrong order there, right? So if you assume, for instance, that a data series that you're observing by the individual's behavior, so for instance, like whether or not they've tweeted at a particular time, is generated by a conditionally stationary stochastic process. In other words, Conditioning on their past behavior, their future behavior follows some known predictive distribution, right? So assuming that, then you can group together paths that have the same predictive distribution about the future, right? So give you a very concrete example. Let's imagine um, I see something where someone tweets, doesn't tweet, doesn't tweet, tweets, and I see another past behavior where they don't tweet, 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 don't tweet. And in both of those cases, it turns out that they have about a 50% probability of tweeting in the next time step. Well, then I can group those two paths be, be together because I know that there's no difference, right? It doesn't matter which of those paths I've seen. On the other hand, if their pass was no, don't tweet, don't tweet, don't tweet, don't tweet, and that has 0% chance of tweeting in the future, then I can, or probably doesn't have 0%, but 1%, right? Then I can know to exclude that from that system. Right? So we could then build up these states that represent the similar possible futures, and then we could trace an individual's behavior through those states. Right? And these state machines become our agents in our agent-based model. Right? Uh, and um, there was, there's been some great work in this space using what's known as the causal state splitting and reconstruction algorithm, where you can show that you can learn this fairly quickly uh, for a large data set, given that you have a small look back of a window and a small alphabet, but we'll talk about those limits in a bit. Um, so we'll call this model learn the causal state model for each user. And causal state modeling is great because it has the unique property of being, and this is statistically proven under the causal state splitting and reconstruction algorithm, maximally predictive and minimally complex. And what we mean by that, and Cosma again is the one who's done a lot of work in this space along with Jim, right, Crutchfield, but uh, is that these, um, that these systems have the maximum ability to predict the future given the past behavior, right, that they've observed so far. They're not gonna be worse than any other, they're not gonna have any additional biases or anything like that. And at the same time, they're gonna have the smallest number of uh, states in the system. And that means that that's what we mean by minimally complex, right? So that's a great kind of definition. So now that you can have some idea, some flavor of how computational mechanics might work with big data, um, let's, I'm gonna take you through two quick examples. 